Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about brain meltdowns. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software engineer, why is it that my brain completely shuts down sometimes during coding interviews, but then I'm able to solve the problem in a few minutes after the interview is over? Well, because you're not in a relaxed environment, that's one. And the other one is that you think that you have the solution, but you probably don't. Or rather, you might not have. These are usually what I find. Uh, let me explain that a little bit. So, in case you didn't know that, it's stressful, stressy, to be in a coding interview. And I don't care how many times. I mean, even I say. I mean, I I kind of just give people the uh, real answer where I say that we're gonna try to make this a very like a really a relaxed experience for you. But yeah, me saying that there's no pressure is probably not gonna help much. And the candidates actually find that to be more relaxing because I don't know why we do this. I why well, I know why we do it. But uh, the corporate talk usually doesn't go over so well with candidates when you're trying to relax them because when you have I've seen this a hundred times when managers and managers stop doing this. It's so dumb when they just smile this uh, corporate smile that they've trained uh, you know, and to to keep forever and ever, and uh, then they say, "Oh, we're just having a conversation between people. This is not an interview. It's just a conversation." I go, "Yeah, absolutely. That's why I'm sitting here with a checklist." that the candidate can see and I'm gonna take some boxes and that's why we have a form of prepared questions it's just a conversation right no stakes Ugh. I don't know why people do that but anywho uh, that sort of tension makes people some people are able to process things in a stressful situation like that but the reality is that software development in order to do it effectively you usually have to either know your stuff really really well or not feel much in terms of prestige or you know, have you have a good control on your nerves uh, when you're in that sort of situation and then be able to operate during those circumstances effectively for you to be able to access that part of your brain otherwise you might you're gonna basically freeze up I think the concepts are called fight flight and freeze which are the three states that stress inducers into people and as you can probably imagine the military tra tries to train people to do fight or flight it's the same thing I used to do when I was a martial arts teacher because the worst possible state of mind to be in in a stressful situation is freeze and that's when you get hit by the car that is coming your way and um, and that's basically really what it comes down to your brain shuts down uh, because you're stressed and you're focusing too much and that's my only tip to you to solve this guys my tip to you is to try to work on yourself and realize that there is very little you can do to impress people by trying to be impressive. Does that make sense to you? If you can change your perspective from that I'm gonna try to impress these people that I'm a really good software developer and, folk, and instead look at the interviewing process as you being part of a beauty contest. Guys, if case you didn't know that, beauty contests are fucking unfair. There's nothing fair about them. It's the same thing with, you know, do you have talent, etc. Et you have a bunch of random strangers who are so-called judges, who are alleged experts, who have their own value systems. Some of them might even be, you know, they might be all kinds of different people. Some of them like blondes, some like brunettes. Except they have all these dispositions. It's just a basic, it's like a cooking contest, for God's sake. Who the fuck has ever won a cooking contest and felt that, or rather, <laughs> how can you win a cooking contest in an objective manner? It cannot be done. And when you realize that you can't win objectively at an interview, that it really is an error-prone pro process where, guys, I have literally been in interviews where we've had amazing candidates 
who are so good, so perfect, and we still didn't hire them because, you know, we had a budget for hiring a consultant and they wanted to work for us, or vice versa, they wanted to be a consultant, but we didn't have that in the budget, so we have to fail them. And in some cases, I've been in interviews where I have literally said to my manager that this person is not gonna, should not work here. It's a very, very bad individual, bad attitude that's gonna just cause a lot of problems. And he still hired them. And you know why? Because he didn't want to lose his budget, because his boss told him, basically said to said to him that, well, if you don't hire somebody, I'm going to just reduce your budget. And that he didn't want, so he thought, okay, I'll just get a really bad person or someone who at least knows some coding, and then, you know. So the, the, this process, guys, it's very unfair, and when you realize that it's it's sort of the same experience as just taking off all your clothes on like one of those fitness uh, things right and just going out on stage that's all you're doing when you're at that stage everything that is possible for you to do in a nice fashion should have already been prepared if you're trying to be impressive in that po at that exact point you're gonna fail I promise you so you know just get it over with. Just go, just walk out on stage and stand there and try to look at it. That's exactly that. Because at least I find that to be a very relaxing thing for my brain because I know that if I try to focus too much on being impressive or trying to do things well and so forth, it just never goes well. Because being relaxed actually usually eases the tension for yourself so that you're at least more capable of dealing with all the stress of the coding interview. You're never going to be completely stress free but it's going to help a lot. And so I try to tell people that this this process is air prone and it is bad and you don't really have to worry so much if you don't get the job because at the end of the day the only thing that really indicates whether or not you're a good or bad software developer is if you get rejected all the time if everybody is always you know for whatever reason then you need to work on yourself but having an interview where it's just really bad or something like that it really isn't down to just you it is a, down to a multitude of different issues that is leading to this. So the fact that you're freezing up, it's not weird, guys. And I promise you, it's exposure again. Just as with a soldier who needs to learn how to be prepared for combat, or you know, someone who's gonna. I mean, imagine if you want to see someone tense up, go and check my old YouTube videos from way back when I started doing this stuff. I basically couldn't talk in an efficient manner on camera because. It took a while to get used to the idea that there's a bunch of people, well, it was two, if I remember at the time, who are going to look at this thing and judge me for it. And you're facing the same thing. So it's really down to your emotional state. If you can get comfortable with the idea that there's no fair way of doing this well, so you might as well just do as well as you can and emotionally be okay with whatever happens because you know that if this doesn't go so well okay yeah sure I'll try to see if I can do this better next time it's riding a bike it's practicing anything you fail you fail you fail and you keep on trying and you just need to get it all right once and there you go you have your job so what I want you to take away from this is that your brain usually shuts down and you remember things afterwards because you're stressed and stress is bad. Stress is bad for you. Fight or flight, guys. And that's the uh, that's at the very least if you're in a combat situation, what you should be doing. In the interview stage, don't you know you should probably not flee the room or fight your in interviewer. It's better to just accept that this is, as I said, it's basically a beauty pageant or something like that, where all your pre all the things that you could have done to prepare for this should have already been done and now you just have to go through this thing like a storm or like going out on stage and just doing your presentation or something like that it's just something you need to get through right the one thing i warn you about though is that if you you know some people think that they know the answer afterwards some and that's something that i find to be a very interesting phenomenon as well Usually this also happens when you're planning stuff because when you think about software development and coding and so forth usually a lot of hum uh, people they think that the problem is very simple because they just are thinking about it conceptually but when they get down to it they're actually trying to do it 
it turns out that it was a lot more complicated and that's why all almost always all estimates are wrong by the by because when you're planning and thinking about all the things you need to do in order to write that uh, feature that you're working on right it's usually just simple because you don't you cannot possibly comprehend all the di different details that you need to think about while you're doing that so your estimate is based on like an ideal simple uh, problem and then you start working and you realize that oh shit there was all of this all these nitty gritty details that actually makes the whole thing take longer than I thought so be watchful with that if you think that you have the solution afterwards go and check yourself before you assume that all you ever have a problem with is nerves because it might be that you might want to work on certain key things that was part of the interview as well have a great day